Hello, it's Susan here again and I'm going to be thinking today about the question Who do you say I am? I wonder if you like playing games. I like playing games and I can think of a couple of games where you've got to try and guess who somebody is. So the first game is one where you've got a whole board full of lots of different flaps, different characters on them. They all look different and you've got to ask questions and try and eliminate people so you can work out who the person is. So you might ask questions like, is the person a man? Or does the person wear glasses? Or does she have blonde hair? The person's described purely in terms of their appearance, of what they look like. And we sometimes describe people by what they look like too. For example, we might talk about the teacher with the red hair and glasses, or the footballer with curly hair who's very tall, or maybe the short smiley woman that we see on the bus sometimes. And then there's another game we play where you have maybe a sticker on your head and it has somebody's name on it and you've got, you can't see it, but everybody else can and you have to ask questions to find out who you are. So you might ask, am I a woman? Um, am I famous for playing sport? Is it football? Is it tennis? Is it running? Have I won any gold medals? Am I British? Am I Usain Bolt? So asking all those questions and we learn about the person as you ask those questions. In this game it's more than just the physical description that tells us about the person. We find out things maybe to do with what they do and sometimes it's useful to know who they're related to. Um, we might describe somebody as being somebody's grandson or somebody's um, uncle or brother. So there's lots of different ways of answering the question, who am I? I wonder what you might say if I were to ask the question, who am I? Or who do people say I am? Hopefully somebody um, would give the answer, oh, you're Susan. Um, that's my name. And the name is something that is really important when we're talking about who somebody is. It also would depend who you ask. Um, if you ask people that I work with, they might say, oh, she works for the school office um, in the degree committee. At uh, church, some people might say, oh, um, she leads Jigsaw, or she helps run Mini Jaffas. And other people would say, oh, that's Michelle's sister, or that's Terry and Carol's daughter, or that's Gerald's wife. So we have lots of different ways of working out who people are. I'm going to share a story with you about when Jesus asked his friends who he was. Here's the story. One day. Jesus was in a place called Caesarea Philippi, where people were expected to treat the Roman Emperor Caesar as the most important person. He asked his friends who people said the Son of Man was. Jesus called himself the Son of Man. They had different answers. Some said he was a character from the past, such as John the Baptist or Elijah. Some said he was Jeremiah or another prophet. Somebody who spoke messages from God. Then Jesus asked his friends, What about you? Who do you say I am? It was Simon that answered. He said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For my Father in heaven revealed this to you. I will call you Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. I will give you the keys of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he told the disciples not to tell anybody that he was the Messiah. Well, that is an interesting story. Lots to think about. It focuses on who Jesus is. And it is clear that people give different answers. People seem to agree that Jesus was somebody pretty special. Somebody chosen by God with an important job to do. However, it was Peter 
that said out loud who Jesus really was. He recognised him as the Messiah, one anointed by God, whom the Jews were expecting to deliver them. But he also said that Jesus was the son of the living God. That's amazing. That's a very special relationship. And it means that Jesus is a very special person. I think today people still give different answers as to who they think Jesus is. I wonder what people might say. They could say all sorts of things. They might say Jesus was Mary's son. He was raised by Mary and Joseph, who was a carpenter. And that was the trade that Jesus had. He was a carpenter too. They might say that Jesus told great stories. They might say Jesus was a rebel. Or Jesus was just a man. Jesus was a fool. Jesus was a good person. Or perhaps they might say, Jesus is the son of the living God. The answer that we give to that question as to who Jesus is will affect our response to him. Or if we even bother to respond at all. If we think of Jesus as a good man or a good storyteller, we might feel we can learn something from him or see him as a good role model. If we regard him as an historical figure who lived a long time ago in a foreign country, we may feel he has nothing much to do with our lives today at all. However, if like Peter we see Jesus as the son of the living God, then how will that affect our lives? And if we aren't sure who Jesus is, with the possibility that he is the son of the living God, isn't it worth spending a bit of time finding out a bit more? And that's my challenge to you, is just think about who is Jesus? What difference does he make to you?